It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold. These are Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats over all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains they bend. But with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel strains have rolled two thousand years of wrong, and man at war with man fears not the love. For lo, the days are hastening on, thy prophet bards foretold, when with the ever circling years comes the age of gold, when peace shall over all the earth in ancient splendor. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. My name is Jody Clark. It's a pleasure to be with you here in the parish of St. Timothy's and St. Paul's. Um, COVID's on us again, and once again, we're not able to worship in, in, in person. Uh, we'll monitor the situation to the best, best of our ability and try to keep everyone safe. I hope that's a part of your prayer life. It's certainly part of my prayer life daily. Um, so we're going to have to limp through this, but I really appreciate the creativity, spontaneity, um, and joy that people have brought to the video presentations that we're, we're able to post for you. So we're able to stay connected. We're able to still stay a worshiping community. And hopefully today will be a life-giving and animating service for you. We're going to go on a bit of adventure in a few minutes. I'm going to take you for a journey. So let's talk about what's going to take place today. Today is January the 9th, but we're actually going to use the lessons for January the 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany. The Epiphany was the 12th day of Christmas. In the Orthodox Church, it's considered Old Christmas Day or The Christmas Day. It's the day that the Magi, the wise folk, arrive and pay homage to Jesus. They acknowledge him and they acknowledge that he is going to play an important role in the history of the world. They're not sure what it is, but they know it's significant. So today as a church, we're going to honor that particular day, the day, the Feast of the Epiphany. Now, um, let's begin, as we always do, with the Lord's Prayer. So let's just take a second, take a deep breath. By the way, I should say you're in my living room right now, and this is actually where the, the, chair, the chair I'm in is a chair I do most of my marking. For some of you that know, I'm a university professor, and this is actually my marking chair, and just behind you, just behind where the camera is, uh, is a fireplace. 
It's a really cozy place to do marking. I tell students that I, I try to get in the very best possible position I can be in, the most relaxed and open when I'm marking their papers. Um, and for the most part, it works pretty well. So this is my marking chair. It's also my reading chair. It's a place I do a lot of my, just behind here is my reading lamp. Won't put it on right now, it's a little distracting. But talk about reading and talk about prayer. Let's pray again, take a nice deep breath. And together we'll share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to do uh, three more prayers. The first prayer is the colic for today, and I'm going to use the Book of Alternative Services. Now, this is a brand new book for me. This actual, this, the book isn't new. It came out in 85, and I bought one in 1985, and it gave up the ghost just before Christmas. Pages were falling out. I was losing pages, so I bought myself a new one, and Father Mike blessed it on Christmas Eve at St. Timothy's when we were, or I guess just before Christmas Eve, when we were preparing our services, taping our services for Christmas Eve. He blessed it. So this is the very first time I read from it. And I'm going to read the collect for this day, for the Feast of the Epiphany. And here we are. The sentence that guides us through the week. This is from Matthew's Gospel. You're going to hear it again in a few minutes. We've seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Our collect for this day. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to worship your son, Guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. From the Book of Common Prayer, this book's falling apart on me too. It's, it, it's a little bit older, but it's falling apart. I thought we should pray a prayer, particularly for people who are feeling anxious this time. There's a lot of anxiety. And believe it or not, in the Book of uh, Common Prayer, there's a prayer for anxiety for those who are anxious. Let us pray. Almighty God, who are afflicted in the afflictions of thy people, Regard with thy tender compassion those in anxiety and distress. Bear their sorrows and their cares. Supply all their manifold needs and help them both and us to put our whole trust and confidence in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I'd like to pray for the healthcare workers, the nurses, the doctors, all the support care people, the pharmacists, everyone who's helping uh, address the COVID crisis. So let's pray for the healing ministries. Almighty God, whose blessed son Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue to beseech thee. This is gracious work among us especially praying for the doctors and the nurses and all the health care workers who are devoted to taking care of us during this time of pandemic. Cheer, heal, and sanctify the sick. Grant to the physicians, surgeons, nurses, wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience, and send down thy blessing upon all who labor to prevent suffering and to forward thy purpose of love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, let's take a bit of an adventure. You're going to be hear some, hearing some readings, and then the gospel is going to be done outside, and so too will um, the sermon, as well as the closing, closing blessing. So please stay with us and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye-bye. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, Jerusalem, and shine like the sun. The glory of the Lord is shining on you. Other nations will be covered by darkness, but on you the light of the Lord will shine. The brightness of his presence will be with you.
Nations will be drawn to your light and kings to the dawning of your new day. Look around you and see what is happening. Your people are gathering to come home. Your sons will come from away. Your daughters will be carried like children. You will see this and be filled with joy. You will tremble with excitement. The wealth of the nations will be brought to you. From across the sea, their riches will come. Great caravans of camels will come from Midian and Ephah. They will come from Sheba, bringing gold and incense. People will tell the good news of what the Lord has done. The word of the Lord. Psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills, the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason, I, Paul, prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this then, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. The mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the holy realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, may we approach, approach God with freedom and confidence. The word of the Lord. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Yahweh's people dance for joy, oh come before the Lord, and play for Him on glad tambourines, and let your trumpet sound. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Rise, old children, from your sleep. Your Savior now has come. He has 
turned your sorrow to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing out. sounds the dead shall be raised I know my Savior lives sing a new song unto the Lord let your song be sung from mountains high sing a new song unto the Lord singing alleluia singing you the holy gospel of the lord jesus christ according to matthew now when jesus was born in bethlehem of judah in the days of herod the king behold wise men from the east came to jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the jews for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him when Herod heard, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ had been born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star, which they had seen in the east, went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. And they saw the star, and they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed, and they went back to their own country by their own way. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi. Welcome to the, uh, the Feast of the Epiphany. In the early church, the Epiphany was considered one of the holiest days. The other days that were considered significant were the Feast of the Pentecost, the birth of the church, and also Easter Sunday. The, of the three big feasts, the Epiphany was considered one of the three major feasts. It was old Christmas Day, the 6th of January. And as I said earlier in the introduction, today is the 9th of January, but we're observing the, 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 uh, the readings for the 6th of January. You heard the gospel just a few minutes ago, um, the coming of the wise men. In the Orthodox Church, the Church of the East, there aren't just three wise men, there are actually 12 wise men. Um, in the West, our church, our tradition has three, largely to um, go along with the idea of three, the three gifts, frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Now, the wise men were fascinating. They're referred to as magi, and that's generally how I refer to them. The word magi has the same derivation from the word magic. Now, the church in the early times had real difficulty, and always has, and continues to have difficulty with the idea of magic. There's no such thing as magic. Um, 
I'll tell you what the major problem the church has with, the, with magic. The idea of magic is that it's really about deception. There's no such thing as the metamorphosis of objects or it's all just sleight of hand. You're being deceived. And so the church had difficulty with the idea of deception. The other thing the church had difficulty with in the early days was the idea of tampering with natural order, which is what magic partly tries to do. It tries to alter metabolisms and how we function and how we see things. So the church had difficulty with magic, and I have difficulty with that kind of magic as well. But these guys weren't magicians in that sense. They were astrologers. Now, again, the church, there were two kinds of astrologers. There were those who followed the stars, or astrologers, and those who followed astronomy, or that the stars somehow conveyed messages. Again, the church is difficult with the idea that the stars would dictate the course of a person's life or outcomes, because really that was the purview of God. Now, the interesting thing about the Magi is they're on the cusp of something brand new. They're both scientists and explorers. That's their idea. They're, they know something's taking place in the sky, in the stars, and they follow it. They're inquirers. They want to know what's going on. Something's going on here. They read the sacred texts. They're familiar with the Hebrew texts, although they weren't, they weren't Jewish. They're probably Zoroastrian priests. They're familiar with all the texts. They're reading the texts. These guys are well-schooled. They want to know what's happening. And they think this is about the coming of the Messiah, the new king of Jerusalem, the new king of the Jews. They think that because the star is appearing over Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the city of David, and David was one of the great patriarchs of the early church, one of the great leaders of the early church. So they're putting pieces together. See, they're inquiring. They want to know. They want to try to figure things out. They're trying to ascertain what the significance of this star is. Now, the star is important for a couple of reasons. We see in the gospel the reaction that Herod has to the star. He's concerned about it. He's anxious. Now, it's really interesting why he's anxious. He's anxious because Julius Caesar, remember Julius Caesar? Well, Julius Caesar had just been killed about 40 years before Herod. And what had happened with the, the death of Julius Caesar was a comet, a celestial body appeared just before the Ides of March that year. So generally when a star appears, it means something's about to change. The world is changing. So Herod knew that a comet in the sky didn't bode well for leaders. He could be the guy. So he's reacting that way. He's reacting out of history. He said, that's a comet. I see another comet and I better watch out and I have to eliminate my opposition. That opposition for him was Jesus. At least that's who he thought it was. Some kid, some young Jewish baby was his opposition. The thing I really like about the Magi, and the reason I think it's important for the church to remember the Feast of the Epiphany beyond the idea of it being the 12th day of Christmas and focusing on the nativity of Jesus, is because I really like the example of the Magi. The Magi are wise men wise people. They're inquirers. They want to know what's taking place. They're curious. I think the very bedrock of our faith is that of curiosity, the need for us to be curious, the need for us to ask questions and to not be satisfied with platitudinal answers or pat answers or no answer at all. We need to know things. We need to ask questions. These guys were explorers. In a time between science and myth, between magic, conjuring, alchemy, and real science, these guys were in the vanguard. They were in the vanguard, and they were curious about this baby born in a minor town, Bethlehem, in a minor country, in a minor power in the world. They were intrigued by this, you see? When a star comes into the heavens, a comet, and that's what we think it was, when a comet comes into the, into the skies, 
It ushers in change. The cosmos seems to open up and pose new questions. And the Magi were interested in figuring that out. That's why this day is so significant. Now, let me tell you a very simple question, story. Once upon a time, there was a monk. Well, two monks, actually. An old, wise monk and a young monk. And the young monk said to the older monk, he said, how many friends should a person have? And the old monk looked at him, he said, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question, but there's a book in my library the very top of the bookcase. At the very top of the bookcase, there's a book. Get that book, bring it here, and we'll see if it has the answer. So the young monk went and he, he looked at the book. He looked at the bookcase. He looked way up. It was 20, 30 feet high. Way, 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 way up. He thought to himself, what should I do? So he called one of his friends over. He said, Brother Monk, can you help me get that? He said, yeah, sure, get on my shoulders. So he got on his shoulders, but still, not enough, not enough height. So he calls one of his other friends over. Brother Monk, can you help me? We're trying to get the book, it's just up there. So the monk gets on his shoulders and goes a little higher. Finally, six monks standing on each other's shoulders now. Finally get the book, dislodge the book and bring the book down. The young monk has the book and he's taking it back, he's happy, he's walking back, he's taking it back to his brother, the old wise monk, and suddenly a smile appears on his face and he thinks to himself, ah, I know the answer to the question now. You can never have enough friends. That's the answer to the question. So he goes back and he sees the great monk and he says to him, Father, I realize he answered the question. You can never have enough friends in life. And the old wise monk smiles and said, that's true. But maybe next time, next time you'll find a friend who has a ladder. <laughs> this is the Feast of the Epiphany. It's a time where wise people try to put pieces together, piece together the coming of Jesus, piece together a new world, one full of wisdom, one full of friendships one full of curiosity. As I said before, the biggest antidote in our world to all its problems, particularly anxiety, is curiosity. Keep asking questions. Have adventures. Celebrate each other. Enjoy the day. Blessings to each of you on this, the Feast of the Epiphany.
day when peoples from afar came to worship Jesus the Lord, let our prayer be as wide as the world. God of light and life, our prayers rise before you this day in hope and faith. Flame of abundant love, be our joy in proclaiming your good news to the world. We pray for all who are coming to faith, all who wonder about faith, and all who are struggling with faith. Light of all creation, guide us to lead, teach, and nurture your disciples. We pray for those in need of food, shelter, clothing, and of God's healing touch, especially for those whom our prayers are requested. We pray for our sponsorship family in Kenya, Tesfe, Sudi, and family. Comforter of the suffering, warm our hearts and hands to loving service. We pray for the world, especially where there is trouble and suffering, far away or nearby. We pray for the people of southern British Columbia, Syria, Kenya, and Afghanistan. Ember of steadfast care, fuel our passion to challenge injustice and violence and to pursue peace and reconciliation. We pray for the land on which we stand, the peoples, creatures, plant life, and waters around us. We pray for wisdom for the leaders and for all people to choose wisely in caring for our planet. Star blaze of glory, Lead us to care for this fragile earth, our island home, and to heal the circle of creation. God of radiant light, your love illumines our hopes before we even know them, and our needs before we ask. Kindle your flame within us, that in our prayers and service, we may know your transforming work in the world around us. We pray that all people may learn, like the wise men, to share the treasures of our goods and hearts. Lord our God, we rejoice that you have come near us in Jesus your Son. Let him be the light of life, now and forever. Amen. Um, I went out to Shuby Park, so I did the first part of the service, then I went out, I read the gospel out in Shuby, and I also uh, did the reflection out there, walking some of the paths. So I hope you enjoyed the adventure. I hope you got in the spirit of the wise men and the wise people. And heaven knows that uh, St. Paul's and St. Timothy's are full of wise folk. Let's live in the spirit of the Magi. Stay curious, stay open, asking great questions and helping each other. You can never have too many friends. In that spirit, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forevermore. Take care. Stay safe.